Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me here. I'm super excited to have a very informative mortgage meeting with Mac Daniel Phillips from Phillips Mortgages. He is the CEO and owner, and we are going to talk everything real estate. So with no further ado, kindly help me welcome him, Mac Phillips. Well, thank you for joining us here, Mac. How are you? Hey, Shanice. Um, I'm doing really, really good. Thanks. How are you today? Doing really well. Thank you. So can you tell me, what do you guys do? <laughs> Holy smokes. What a loaded question. Well, it really goes, you know, day by day and client by client. But um, I would say my day is really, um, I'm a private detective. I'm a financial advisor. Uh, I'm a confidant. Uh, I can be a therapist some days. Um, but my primary function is making sure that you can get into a home uh, and get the absolute best experience doing that. So I think, you know, a lot of what people do, or the, I guess the expectation of what we do is, hey, you know, we shop for rates, we give you mortgages, and then you're out the door when it's, it's really a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, you know, integrating, you know, families mortgage product into their short term, you know, their long term and their, their overall investment strategies. Uh, to make sure that we can optimize cash flow, payment, and equity objectives for that family. So ultimately, we're really strategizing your biggest investment tool uh, to make sure that yourself and your family can really get ahead uh, moving forward in such a crazy market. Thank you for telling me. I know you and I personally work together. With that said, can you let me know what makes you different than the trillions of mortgage agents out there? 100%. Um, so I think that's, that's a lot of to do with why I joined the industry. Um, really the systems that I put in place for my business is, you know, what differentiates me is the process and really the customer journey, because I found when I purchased my first home, the experience really wasn't seamless. I didn't feel like I learned very much. And when I got to the end of it, I was like, holy smokes, I don't feel more in the know than I did six weeks ago when I first walked into, you know, and talked to the first teller. So what my experience looks like and how I differentiate myself from the others is that I really take my clients through a journey with respect to, um, you know, the entire products, everything we're going to be looking at, uh, but ultimately they're going to be learning while they're working with me. Uh, when, when clients finish, they're going to be excited for their next property. They're excited for the next investment because we really have kind of uh, demystified the entire mortgage product or mortgage process rather. So myself and my clients should expect, you know, a seamless process. Everything's going to be virtual. Um, and I really look into educate and to provide maybe even more information than you anticipated while working together. Um, there's really just three primary steps that get you into purchasing your first home. Um, I love to be able to have first a, a discovery conversation with those clients. I really want to know what makes them tick. Why are we having this conversation? Why are you buying this house now? And also the emotion that's going to be going into getting into that home. And that's really, really crucial. Uh, you know, we get the application together, but then the, the third step and what's really crucial in making sure that clients learn is the strategy session. So we jump on to, you know, a Zoom call, go into a, you know, a, a really detailed strategy session um, about the product, about their options. Um, but one of the biggest keys of that conversation is, is what's called a report card. So I actually go through a seven checkpoint, uh, actually a report card with respects to really looking at those lenders. Um, to see, you know, what all the good things, what are all the potential pitfalls uh, to make sure that when that client chooses that product and that lender, they know, you know, what's going to be coming down the road and really why we're even having this discussion. Um, I've actually talked to clients that have come from, you know, some of the big banks and didn't even know that their product had certain restrictions or certain, you know, policies built into the, built into that fine print. And by ha having that report card session with those clients, I can assert that there will never be a client that's, hey, I didn't know that was in there because that's going to be a huge part of the conversation from day one. Okay. I'm going to yeah. gather in your day-to-day -day line of work, there are tons of things that people don't know either about the process or about mm -hmm. you and how you work. Would you mind telling me what are the biggest things that people don't know that perhaps they really should? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so one of those big things is, 
the way that their mortgage is registered. So, you know, it may sound a little mundane, two large differences in the way that mortgage products can be registered on your title. So you have one mortgage product where the title registration is at your mortgage amount. All of us would look at that and say, hey, you know, as I pay my mortgage down, that additional equity is going to be able to be unlocked and essentially utilized for different strategies if that family chooses to. Where there's another strategy where it actually ties you in or, or kind of handcuffs your collateral or your, 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 your equity with what's called the collateral mortgage. So a lot of clients come to me and say, hey, you know, I want to do a refinance. I want to do, you know, a secondary mortgage. Let's access this equity. And we actually can't because they were chose or they were asked to sign into a mortgage and not educated initially from day one, whereas they actually have a collateral mortgage that says, guess what? You can't utilize the equity. You can't unlock that equity without going back to that same lender because of the way that they registered your title. So one of the things I think is key for clients is to have that understanding and to really be aware of how that can be impacted by that different specs to how that you know, title registration is done. Um, but also I think one of the things that are really not looked at is, is that big shiny P word. And that's the first thing that's on my report card is the penalty. Um, I wanna make sure that when clients have a mortgage, they understand exactly how much it's gonna cost if they want to move their mortgage, whether it's today or in five years. And, and I, I don't think clients are aware that when they take a fixed, which is typically what's offered by that lender, take a five-year fix, it's the safe solution. That safe solution is costing families between you know twelve and $15,000 on average when they move their mortgage. So educating the client to say, hey, guess what? If you were to take a variable solution for the last 15 years, History has shown us that that has been the smarter bet with respects to keeping more money in your pocket. And even right now, with respects to us thinking, hey, interest rates are back on the rise, I still sell a variable solution to 90% of my clients. Every mortgage person that I've talked to has a variable solution for their home. I have a variable solution for my home as well. Nobody's thinking that they want to lock in. And by kind of taking away the fear of the changing market from the conversation and say, listen, dollars and cents, statistics shows us this. Uh, let's take what's going to be in your best interest, um, take a variable solution versus a fix. And those are the kind of the two biggest things that I would think that clients are either misadvised or not even educated on from day one, because, you know, the big banks want to make as much money as they can. Absolutely. So yeah. is there something that individuals, whether they're looking to refinance or get into the market altogether, is there mm -hmm. something that people should be aware of for 2022 going into the market? Absolutely. So one of the biggest things that people need to be prepared for with respect to either purchasing their second home or just getting in for the first home is, uh, you know, once upon a time, you used to be able to guess what, call yourself, let's look at five different homes on the weekend, find a home you love and then say, oh, by the way, honey, can we even afford this home? That used to be the way that people bought homes. Uh, financing was a secondary thought, whereas now it needs to be how much can I afford? Let's get my pre-approval long before we look to, you know, make, you know, that investment with the specs of looking at homes on the weekend. Um, so with that entire understanding of financing first, um, the entire condition of financing has been removed from most seller or buyer scenarios where we need to understand, hey, are all of our ducks in a row? Do we have a mortgage that we can count on? Are we confident with the person we're working with? Because we're going to need to make a condition for your offer. Condition of, you know, no appraisal, no home inspection, and of course, no financing. So anyone who's purchased a home in the last five years or is going to be looking to get into a home now needs to be aware of that pivot in the marketplace. Um, you know, we can no longer shop the market the way we used to. We need to make sure that you talk to your mortgage agent in advance and make sure that you really feel confident in your numbers. Um, even before, you know, looking at your very, very first home. That's a huge disconnect and a, and a huge shift. And I think another cool opportunity that a lot of investors should be looking at with respects to, I guess, optimizing their portfolio is um, a very little known fact uh, as well is that you can actually purchase rather residential homes and close commercially. OK, so what this allows you to do, it allows a lot of investors right now who have maximized their residential portfolio. So anybody who's purchasing a home, whether it's an A or a B strategy, whatever that looks like, it's really comes down to your debt service ratios with respects to how much income you make to how much mortgage you can carry. And most investors right now are tapped. Debt. They say, listen, I purchased that second home last year. I've refinanced my, my principal residence. I really don't have any more debt carry left in my ratios but I've got a lot of cash sitting around. I want to buy another home. I want to buy another investment property. So the opportunity here is to leverage 
residential buyers closing commercially. So the way that we can do that is, is that as long as that commercial property, whether it's a home or a sixplex or whatever it is, as long as the income bringing in is either you know, at, at par or above the mortgage needed to sustain that property, you can actually purchase it without your personal debt carry as a part of the conversation. So it's the way that a lot of residential investors can continue their portfolio uh, without having to have their personal finances being brought into the conversation. It's just what that business can produce. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of investors now purchasing their second and third investment property, closing commercially and not having their personal you know, home uh, being taken into consideration. So it's the way to keep the ball rolling, essentially. Absolutely. That's a great food for thought. Can we explore the topic of mortgage conditions? What are the implications? I know we're in such a crazy, fun, wild market. So you're putting in an offer and there's a lot of other competition out there that also has an offer in. Mm -hmm. So you feel as though it's a great idea. Let's take out the mortgage condition. What is the implication of doing so? 100%. So the things that buyers need to be aware for or be aware of in the current market is, is two things, um, especially if it's an insured deal. So insured is anybody purchasing anything less than 20% down, we need to be aware of, hey, you know, this actually needs to fall through or pass through a secondary check that we don't really have the control over, what's called the insurer review. So this property needs to pass certain, uh, first the appraisal needs to come in, but the property itself needs to be in good standing. Um, as well as if it's a condo, the condo board themselves need to be in good standing. And those are things that we would want to understand before putting in an offer. So um, how a client could be impacted, impacted negatively is firstly, if the appraisal was to not come in. So essentially the way that it works when, when buying a mortgage or, or getting a mortgage is, is that the purchase price needs to match what the lender has assessed the value to be at. So what could happen in some scenarios where there's a bidding war, there's 75 offers, a lot of emotion is now built into this now, and a family is now paying 30% more than the ask price, and now we're out of that threshold of what that property is actually worth today. So what happens during the appraisal status or appraisal process, rather, is that that home comes in at a shortfall. So the appraisal doesn't meet the purchase price. So any buyer who is stuck in the scenario needs to be prepared to inject additional cash to make up that shortfall. So that's one of the first things. Um, so anybody who's, who's going to purchase a home in today's market and they want to go in condition free, I would ask them, hey, how much cash do you have laying around to make up a potential shortfall? Uh, if they do, if they don't, that, that would be also be part of our consideration. But then also checking the condo board to make sure that they're in good standing. You'd be surprised how many times condo boards are being sued or, are, or, or, or have very low reserves. Insurers are not going to lend on that property. And that's really not out of our control. So that's why we want to do that, you know, that research, you know, up front. Uh, and, the, and the other side is the, um, the, the, the home inspection. I've actually had clients get a home inspection, luckily put in homes. Uh, walls are falling down. Basement is bowed. Basement is wet. Like things that we certainly can't move forward with respects to, um, you, know, get, you know, getting financing on this property. So um, that's where you come in, the specs to having, you know, that walk around, your keen eye for when you've seen a lot of properties that may have, you know, a fresh coat of paint put over some stains or some, you know, some mold um, to advise that client, hey, you know what, you know, based on my keen eye, let's, let's go look at another place. Um, but then lastly, it's making sure that you have an ironclad pre-approval. So when you come to someone like me, I have what's called a pre-approval guarantee that not only am I guaranteeing that the pre-approval is providing you with your top budget, that when I provide you with a pre-approval that I'm guaranteeing we can get you financing. So that would be the other scary piece is that if you ever got a pre-approval like those online apps where there's no docs up front, mm -hmm. client walks in, does, does you know, a, a condition for your offer, come to find out there's no mortgage for you right now, whether it's credit score or down payment, whatever that is, uh, you would be then you know, stuck losing your deposit. So you, when you're working with someone like myself, you want to make sure that you know, what we can control, we do. Uh, with respects to the property condition uh, and, you know, having that approval being ironclad for you as well. Absolutely. Can we discuss how do people get a hold of you? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've actually had clients say, hey, you know, I wanted to Google you first. I wanted to see who you were. I wanted to look at your online platforms and look at your online reviews before even picking up the phone. So um, I'm easily Googleable. Uh, I've got, <laughs> uh, you know, my... Uh, 
email, uh, you know, Instagram, social media presence is there. Anyone wants to pick up the phone and give me a call. Uh, I pride myself in answering the phones, even on the weekends. Uh, so never hesitate to be in touch. But if anyone wants to just be in touch with social media and send me a DM, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to connect that way as well. But if you Google my name, I guarantee there's only one of me. I'll be the top, <laughs> the top uh, search result. I will still put all of your information just right here, <laughs> but Thanks so much. try Google. <laughs> okay. Well, Mac, thank you so much. You were so informative, super grateful for your time. You if so anyone is looking for an incredible mortgage agent that really will have your back, guide your process, and really is very informative, please give him a call. I will put all of his information just below. Thank you so much for watching, watching, but please like, comment, and share. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Shanice.